Ensuring that canned food is the correct pH level is critical for preventing the growth of Clostridium botulinum spores. Spores are inactive forms of bacteria that can be found on the surfaces of fruits and vegetables. In the right conditions, spores can produce a toxin or poison. Botulism is the potentially fatal disease associated with food contaminated with the toxin. The goal of all food processors and food entrepreneurs is to make safe food. Food safety also is a major concern of government regulators. Thus, understanding food and the basis of processing of foods is important for making a safe food product. Various federal regulations are involved in defining food. Acid foods naturally have a pH of 4.6 or below. Acidified foods are low acid foods that have been adjusted through the addition of acid or acidic foods to a finished equilibrium pH of 4.6 or below. Acidified foods also have a water activity greater than 0.85. Low acid foods, excluding alcoholic beverages, are foods that have a water activity greater than 0.85 and a finished equilibrium pH greater than 4.6. Many processed food products fall under the acid and acidified food categories. These are products that require evidence that the equilibrium pH of 4.6 or less has been met. Low acid foods, in contrast, have additional requirements beyond pH to demonstrate the product's safety. As a result, most small processors do not have the resources to meet the additional requirements and thus avoid processing low acid foods. Therefore, the remaining part of this video will focus on the critical aspects of pH determination and provide a demonstration of pH of acid and acidified foods. Two common approaches to determine the pH of a food are the potentiometric method, for example, a pH meter, and the colorimetric method, using litmus paper. If an accurate and documented pH value is needed, the best practice is to use a pH meter. Alternatively, colorimetric methods such as litmus paper can be used just as a general guide. However, specific numbers are not generated using this technique and therefore an accurate pH value cannot be determined. The Food and Drug Administration defines pH as a measure of the intensity or degree of acidity in a food and sometimes is referred to as potential hydrogen ions. A pH meter is used to measure the intensity of the acidity. Temperature and calibration are two important aspects of pH measurements that need to be monitored for an accurate pH measurement. Temperatures between 68 and 86 Fahrenheit are optimal for pH determination. Avoid using products that have not been allowed to cool below 86 Fahrenheit. In addition to the sample, the instrument should be calibrated using standard buffers at the same temperature. For example, if the product temperature is 70 Fahrenheit, then the pH meter should be calibrated at 70 Fahrenheit. Again, temperature and calibration are two important factors to obtain accurate pH values. Calibration of a pH meter is very important. We need to calibrate based on buffers of known pH. These can be purchased as liquids or in powder formats. Powder formats require that you mix this in the appropriate amount of distilled water. For foods that are acid or acidified, we target our calibration development at the pH 4 and pH 7 buffers. I will demonstrate the calibration of the OHA Starter 300 pH meter. In this method, we will use the pH 7 buffer and the pH 4 buffer because we are measuring the pH of acid or acidified foods. The first step is to wash your electrode. It's what's very important to remember is that you want to rinse off any material that might be present on the electrode from the previous uh, sample. So in our particular case, the first step is to measure the uh, pH of your seven buffer. And the way that we do this 
is to press the calibration button. So press the calibration, and after several minutes, you will have a pH reading, and then we can move on to the pH 4 buffer. The pH meter has adjusted itself to 7.01, and that is the correct number for our first buffer. So we then we will rinse this electrode, pat dry, and then move that to our second buffer, which is pH 4.01. We then press the calibration button, and we allow it to proceed until we achieve 4.01. The pH meter has now reached 4.01, so our calibration is now complete, and we can move on to reading of our food products. What is very important to know is the nature or consistency of your product. Is it liquid, semi-solid, or solid in nature? Today, we have an example of a liquid sample. In this particular case, it's essentially an apple cider. The first thing to do with a liquid sample is to shake it or stir it to ensure that it is homogeneous. Afterwards, transfer the material into two separate cups. Once you have done that, we will now read our pH of these samples. It's very important to do duplicate samples of your product. So again, rinse the electrode, pat dry, and using your pH meter, press the read button. After approximately uh, two minutes, your meter should have already produced a pH. In our particular case, our pH is 3.77. The next important thing is to, again, rinse the electrode. So we have here, we rinse the electrode, pat dry, and then put the electrode into the second sample. Press the read button. In this particular case, our value is 3.75. So our first sample was 3.77. This sample was 3.75. That's a very consistent reading. And so our product essentially has a pH of 3.76. Semi-solid products are our next category of food items that we will conduct pH on. Uh, these products vary widely in terms of their viscosities. We have a product such as applesauce. Um, in this particular example, we can measure the pH just as we did with a liquid sample. In contrast to applesauce, we have uh, products that are, are more viscous in nature, such as a jam. And in some cases, if you have uh, large fruit particles, we actually will have to blend that sample prior to doing that. And, and for example, we have a strawberry jam that we would need to uh, blend first. So after the sample has been blended, we want to transfer our sample into two separate cups. From there, we will conduct a pH as we did earlier. First, rinse the electrode, tap dry, and then add to the sample. Stir, because this is a viscous sample, so you want to continually stir this particular sample, and then you press the read button on your pH meter. And after approximately a minute, our value is recorded as 3.34 for a pH value. In this particular case, this is a very thick sample so you want to make sure that you rinse thoroughly in comparison to liquid samples. In this particular case, it still is adhering to the probe, so just wipe gently and rinse the electrode a second time. And then continue on to read your second sample. And again, this time the pH reads 3.33. So we have two consistent readings for our strawberry jam product. And again, just to end, re-rinse the sample, 
And because it's thick, you will have to clean the electrode. The third category that we have for products is ones that include liquid and solid particles. Pickles are a very good example of this type of product. What we have to do with this particular type of product is we have to separate the components into the liquid fraction and the solid fractions. Once we have done that, we take the specific weight for each product. For the liquids, I have measured this at about 49% of the total um, weight of our, our jar of pickles, while the cucumber part or the pickle part is 51% of the total weight. So I have done that for you. Once we have the pickle separated, we want to put that in a blender and blend it to the consistency of a paste. And I have already done that for you. As you can see here, it now is a paste-like material. In this particular case, we then are ready to do pH analysis. And this liquid pH uh, value can be determined as previously described. While with the pickles, the ground is very similar to what we had earlier with the strawberry jelly. So you have a very uh, somewhat a viscous sample where we need then to uh, submit our electrode to the sample and we have to do a continued stirring of that product. Again, remember that because of the viscosity, we need to have good contact between the electrode and the acid in that product. And again, we would press read and we would wait for the meter to provide a pH value for us. And in this particular case, our value is 3.36. So this again meets our definition of an acidified food because it has that pH value of less than 4.6. So after we have blended our pickles and recorded the pH of that sample, we then take one last pH measurement on the blended sample. And the blended sample was your ground or blended pickles mixed with the vinegar or liquid portion of that uh, pickle product. We want to maintain that ratio. And earlier I had mentioned that that was 49% liquid and 51% pickles. And so we blend those and I have that blended sample right here. And again, we will record the pH of that sample. It's done essentially the same way as we had done earlier, by stirring the sample and then press the read button. And in this particular case, again, within a minute, it will record that pH. And in this particular case, it is 3.35. So the blended sample um, is representative of what we define as this equilibrium pH for this particular pickle product. The second method that is oftentimes used to determine the pH of a product that contains liquid and solids is to use the entire contents and, and blend in this particular product. The disadvantage to using this particular technique is that you do not uh, determine the pH of the liquid fraction or the separate uh, pH of the pickles themselves. The advantage to the second method though is that it's an easier method because you just simply uh, put all of the contents into a blender and then you blend that to make a paste or liquid like product such as I have here. And so I've already done that for you and, and once we have that particular product, again, we can now do a pH determination. Making safe food is an important goal for food processors and food entrepreneurs. Be sure to calibrate the pH meter with appropriate buffers right before measuring the pH of samples. Measure the pH of samples at the same temperature used during calibration. Select a proper sample preparation method that allows for the sample to obtain a liquid or paste-like consistency. Rinse the electrode with distilled water between pH determinations. Store the electrode in pH 4 buffer to prevent the electrode from drying out.